What's up, guys? It's me, <laughs> Jelly Knees. What did I do with my hands just there? What the hell? I've been doing this for how long now? Um, and this is the Untitled Rant Show. Title still in progress, so please let us know down in the comments whatever Mangoose is doing right now. Uh, but join me, as always, is Raven down there. What's up, Raven? Hey, I'm Raven. What's up, guys? And We're the Evan. Mangoose himself. This probably isn't in the right order anymore, but it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, but today, I'm going to be talking about reviews that people leave for games and then they keep playing like 50 hours worth of the game. I say negative <laughs> reviews that people leave for games. And then keep oh. playing like 50 hours more of the game. I, I have some thoughts about that. But what about you, Raven? I will be talking about... I don't know like the specific term for it, but just people expecting too much from a game right away. Hmm. Just like they want everything right away. They don't want to wait for like updates and stuff. They just they want the extra content now. And you I've got a bit of a broad topic <laughs> this time. Uh, just the effect of mobile games on the entire gaming industry. Uh, i got a lot to say about that, and there's quite a few topics. I might have to split this one up <laughs> across a couple of weeks or something. I don't okay. know. All right, yeah. I dig it. I dig it. For the yeah, first week in three that. weeks, you guys haven't stolen my idea. So, you know, it's yeah, great. Because I, I went last. Because <laughs> I went last. I was going to do the one that you were talking about, and you stole it from me. Yeah, well, what can I say? That's how it feels. <laughs> That's how it feels, Mangoose. Um, <laughs> But Put in so, place. reviews, we've been playing a lot of Hood, of course, right? And so it, mm -hmm. it all ties back to Hood, at least in this particular case. Um, but there are a lot of Steam reviews for Hood that are negative reviews that say, like, this person left the review at six hours. And then it says their current playtime is, like, 150. Nice. And I'm like, so your review you left was basically just, like, dogpiling on the game. It's terrible. You shouldn't play this. Nobody should spend their money on this game, wh whatever it is. And then you added another 144 hours to your playtime afterwards. That doesn't make any sense to me. No. And I just... Funny, I just put a review too, and I have like 42 hours in. Yeah. Like, it, it's one thing if, like, you're critiquing the game just slightly, and you kind of leave one of those neutral re reviews, where it's not... You're not saying it's good, you're not saying it's bad, kind of a buyer's beware. You should at least know yeah. this before you go in. I'm okay with that. But a lot of these ones that have this scenario of low review time and then massive play time afterwards are like the worst reviews possible that I just, I seems backwards to me. Um, and I think it translates to people just dogging on the game on Reddit as well. And just going out of their way to complain. But what do you guys think about that? Like, do you, do you understand that kind of concept at all? Or do you think that that's ridiculous? I mean, I don't like, if you're going to, if you're going to talk shit about a game, then just, yeah, stop playing it. Like, but if you're going to talk shit about it in a constructive way, then it makes sense. But if you're just going to go off and be like, this game's terrible, you know, you shouldn't play it, I'm going to give it a bad review, and you're going to keep playing it, then, like, then what kind of message are you saying? You're not really, your actions aren't showing what you actually are saying, so it doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, and you should also consider a playtime a thing. You know, if someone's going to play the game for five hours and then write a review on it, versus someone who's going to play it for 20 hours like you're going to take more probably with the 20 hour guy is because he's experienced more yeah it's it's weird i think there should be like you should allow yourself a grace period before you write a review because if you get out of a game where you just got the shit kicked out of you then yeah you're going to flame the shit out of that game because you're frustrated at that time but then you know you back out and you think, well, maybe we could have done this, or maybe if I would have done this this way, then and then you get back into the game, and then you start enjoying it. But you already wrote that fucking shitty review because you just hip-fired that shit out of nowhere because you yeah. just got stomped. And we kind of actually briefly talked about it yesterday, um, but that like the IGN review felt very much that it was just a lack of playtime behind the review more so than it was anything else. So right. you can have these big publications still have that same problem. And maybe they're the ones that are promoting that problem. In that if, if IGN can write a review after six hours, why can't I? Right? And yeah, so and then that also branches into like people not understanding what kind of game they're playing. And they immediately compare it to another game like mm -hmm. it. Because I guess people just have to compare it to something. Like any new game that comes out, oh, it plays like this. Oh, it plays like that. Like... Sure, little stuff here and there, but when you like aggressively go into like, for example, Hood, they go in and they think it's like a for honor where the combat is more lock on. There's fainting attacks, there's faking, there's, you know, 
unblockable attacks, all this stuff. But you go in and you start playing it, and you try to do that, and you just get shit on, and you're like, well, this is stupid. It's not what I thought it was. So I'm just going to be mad about it instead of trying to learn the game. I think a lot of it, too, is you already alluded to it a bit, Jelly, is just mob mentality. Like, um, once it, it becomes cool to shit on a game after a while, so just everybody shits on it, and it's just reinforced by everybody That's else. That's cool thing it. to do. So you end up with people that are writing reviews that have never... You see that sometimes. People write a review on a game that they've never played before. It's like, what are you even doing? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's just ridiculous. I mean, we saw with Cyberpunk, that, that kind of bandwagoning of yeah. when everybody was coming out hating it, that means oh, you yeah. had to go out and write a negative review, even if you were enjoying the game, right? So it's it's one of the, it, the, the mob mentality, the bandwagoning of it all. And just, if you're going to write a review like that, at least have the, the wherewithal to go back when you've played another 50 hours and change your review. Because who knows if that's the review that gets, the, that somebody sees or enough players see that they don't buy the game and the game dies because you left this one negative review, but instead you've changed your tune and love the game since then, right? Like, it could butterfly effects out of control off with so many people leaving these early reviews. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but it was, I think it was the day one of playing it, that like early access day, like Friday. And King Athalian, a big streamer, he's on Facebook gaming now, but he tweeted out and said like, I don't like Hood, I'm refunding it. And just so many of the, the interactions are like, well, or some people are like, yeah, like I agree, like I'm refunded too, it's garbage. Some people are like, well, no, I actually kind of like it. But he never like uttered, he never really said why. He just said, yeah, it's bad, I'm, un I'm refunding it. And then like people feel so justified. They're like, and we played with like another uh, one of Mud's friends we were playing with. Like, I'm not calling you out if you're watching for, like, I'm not being mean to you. I'm just saying that like he was playing it, he tried to get into it for the first time. And, I don't know if we just were matching with people that have played a little while, but he was just getting kind of frustrated about it. He's like, yeah, I don't really like this, and the combat's kind of weird. But even him, he just ended up refunded it anyway. I'm like, it's a $30 game. Is it really that big of a deal that you got to like announce it to everyone? Like, yeah, I'm refunding it, man. Give me my 30 bucks back. You're right. It's the cool thing Why to do. Why not just hold on to it and wait to see what the future is going to do? It's not like it's $70 you spend or something. Part of the problem is compounded in Hood because of the perk system. Because you don't have those perks immediately, like oh, some of the, okay, the, yeah, I can see that. Like John is unplayable without surging smash. Yep. Like if you can't just one shot people with his with his jumping attack, then why the fuck would you play John? And having Other to grind like, to level seven to get that, yeah, is annoying yeah. to a lot of people. So people are writing these reviews before they get their perks, and they don't realize that the perks are what make you powerful. That's why that other guy just shit on you all game. It's like, why did I keep getting one shot by this dude? It was because he had a perk that you didn't yeah. have. You could have you could have been doing the same, but you I haven't grind, about that. grinded that perk up. So I think Hood um, did, did it to themselves a little bit with that perk system, but I think you should, that's something really you should expect deal, in though. any game. I think to me, it's we, not really a big deal. I don't know. But that's you've just played me. enough of the game, though, to get the perk. So it's like, it's. It's one of those but even without the perks, like when I was playing it day one and day two before even like because even I was unlocking perks on Robin, I wasn't playing them all because I didn't like them. But so I was still running around with like not a lot of perks. Day one and day two, everybody was unlocking the perks. That's right. the difference. Yeah, then now your, we're far enough out. Is, yeah, of course. I'm level 100, right? I can go into a game against level fives. I could have every perk in the game and they're still trying to unlock their first one or their, right. th their second one or whatever it may be. So it's. Now we've gotten far enough away from the beginning of the game that that disparity is much larger. I think the way we can kind of compare it for a lot of people is the old card system in Paragon. Having to unlock cards that some were just outright broken. When you go into a game that somebody has that card and you don't, you're just SOL. There's nothing you can do to be yeah. as good as them. Even if you mechanically play better, that card is just stronger. And you saw yeah. it all the time. And that's why that system... You have changed certain cards in order for some heroes to be viable and it's the same way in hood you have to have certain perks for certain heroes to be viable yep absolutely. or combination of perks so that, that's probably something that leads into it i'm, I'm not point. saying that's an excuse for people that are writing these bad reviews and then continuing to play the game i'm just saying that that might be part of the reason why it's getting some negative reviews is people just aren't playing it long enough to get their perks and i think yeah the the sensationalism of it all right of the the everyone has to bandwagon together to hate a game is detrimental across the board 
I think we need to normalize being okay with people not liking a game, right? That's, I've been trying really hard with hood mm -hmm. to be, to basically tell people like, it's not for everyone, like just plain and simple. It's not going to be for everyone. I'm not saying everyone can go pick up this game and they're going to love it. It, but so if you don't like it, I get it. Uh, but I also want some more reasoning than just, well, it's not for honor because that's a BS reason. Or like, um, oh, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, if you have reasoning behind why you don't like it, more power to you doesn't bother me in the slightest. If you're just <laughs> one of those guys that are just bandwagoning, what, what's your reasoning? Where, where are we coming from with this more so than just, I don't like it because so-and-so doesn't like it? Hood is definitely the type of game, too, that people either love it or hate it. Absolutely. Like, there's not a lot of in the middle. There's, not, there's no casual Hood players. There's people that are playing the absolute dog shit out of it like we are. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that played it a couple times, didn't like it, peaced out. Yep absolutely yeah and i don't know if i said it on the show before but it i've said i know i have said this before but i can compare it to for honor in the sense of community where like for honor has been around for almost four years or four years now and they still have a good team back in the game and a good community still playing the game but it's small mm -hmm. so they also had a big you know it's ubisoft so they got a lot of money i guess but <laughs> And that's the other know. thing for Hood in particular, but I think you, we can apply it a lot more across the board, is that Hood's not a AAA studio. The developers behind Hood are not yeah. a AAA studio, right? They cut them some more slack than these AAA studios that have millions of dollars and tons of manpower to do things, right? Hood has yet to put out their like first real patch since the game right. has come out. Uh, and a lot of people are losing right their minds over it. And while, yes, do I want the patch to come out desperately? Absolutely, I do been one week yeah exactly it's been one week <laughs> cut them some slack they're a it's dev been team one freaking week i don't dude. know how many they have but if i had to take a guess they're probably between 50 and 100 people max and raven's making me jealous with the uh beer so sorry okay <laughs> get the party started you know it's five o'clock somewhere uh, 20 minutes actually cut them some slack they're not triple a studios they don't have millions of dollars they don't have hundreds of people working on it and even if they did have hundreds of people working on it like cyberpunk for instance Cut them some slack. Like, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes than just pushing a button for an update. Correct. I think, I think that honestly leads straight into my topic. Exactly. Of people <laughs> just expecting too much from a game at launch. So, the first example I have is uh, Monster Hunter. With Monster Hunter World, that was the whole, and I've explained this before already, the last time I talked about Monster Hunter, but it was the introduction to get people all around the world to play the game. People who haven't played the game before. So it was very, it didn't offer a lot to veteran players base game at the end. Then a year later or whatever it was, they came out with Iceborne, which that was really good for the game because it expanded upon what they had already, gave a new area, more monsters, more materials, more weapons, XYZ, just made the game more fun. And then from there, they kept adding to it with free updates. I'm pretty sure they did that before with World into Iceborne. Same thing with Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise comes out. Oh, and so people are already crying about how the end game is there's not enough to do, there's not enough monsters, whatever. They announced that the first title update, which would be at the end of May, or not May, sorry, the end of uh, April. The game came out late March, end of April's first update. They announced, they showed one monster that they were going to add, and then like a mystery monster. Meanwhile, they come out and show, oh, we're actually adding like five monsters. So then it's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Even after that update now, people are still like, there's not enough to do now. There's still not enough. Like, just, you need to understand that this game is pumping out free content updates monthly. And I'm sure there's enough content there to last you for a whole month. And then some. Especially people like me who really like to play the game. And then they could play it for hours and hours. Even if it's the same thing over and over again. But you, that's so much content to just put into a game like that off the start. And then this could go straight into Hood, where I don't know if it was on Reddit I read, or if it was just from people playing in the game, talking here and there. But people were complaining about, like, oh, there's only four characters to pick from in this game. There's, and like the IGN review, oh my god, there's only five maps in the game. Look at Valorant, dude. Valorant came out with three fucking maps. And look how much people played that over and over and over again. And then they still only have, what, two extra maps? Icebox and now Breeze? Or, th sorry, three, I apologize. So now they have six. Ascent, Icebox, Breeze. But... Five maps on a release on a game like this? That's pretty darn good. And I've already seen another map in from their trailers, a snow map. Mm -hmm. So they have it. They said it's going to come out when they're gonna zero. So within the first three months, they're going to add a new go. map, a new game mode, and cosmetic items. And, yeah. and again, got... it's been one fucking week. 
It came yeah. out May 10th for everyone. It is now May 15th as we're recording this. Come on. That snow map does some Mario Brothers bullshit where you slide around. I'll be so angry. Oh my God. But would you, you though? Would you really be angry, somebody And you slide into them instead of assassinating them? Oh, Dude, I'd be so mad. A sprinting With John fucking... just goes too far and just like... <laughs> 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 With all the funny shit I've seen in this game, right, with just glitches and shit, like the short I made of the Marianne launching into the sky, <laughs> like, I wouldn't go past that. I would probably expect that. And seeing the sheriff teleport and shit, yeah, it's great. I see what you mean with... I've gone back and forth with DLC. Like, I used to be pissed off about it that every game you buy, you end up having to get, like, buy another patch and then buy another patch and buy another patch. But when you really think about it, Downloadable content is a lot preferable than just waiting for a second iteration of that game. Yep. If yeah. you already like the game, DLC gives you more of that game, and it's usually cheaper than just buying the entire game. And um, I, I, I'm kind of down with downloadable content now because it's just it just adds to the game without having forcing you to pay for a completely new upgrade like a. Like, there's no Warcraft 2. There's always just patches and, yeah. and expansions and such. Something that I think Epic has done really well, and I will not praise Epic for a lot of things, but that they did with Fortnite is the Battle Pass system. Creating the Battle Pass and basically giving a, an option for us to pay a little more money, but have a progression system that helps incentivize playing the game for a longer period of time, incentivize playing to completion of that progression system, rewarding you with cosmetics all and some in-game currency and all of these things for $10 for three months, basically, of content. That's a super good system that I'm happy to support more of, assuming it's done well. If it's greedy, that's separate. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, look at how many games have adopted <clears throat> that now. Literally almost every game. And I'm I don't think they can okay do it with, with Hood, though. To be honest. They probably couldn't do it with Hood. They're doing it with Hood. Uh, how are they going to do it, though? You only have... Weapons, skins, and then the gold you spend on them. To be determined, but I know they're doing it with Hood. They, they have okay. already said that they're they definitely doing stuff, a Battle yeah. Pass system. One thing I'll add is that you just praised Epic and Fortnite, so you're dead to me now, Jeff. I, no, 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 no. I said one thing Epic did good with Fortnite. I'm not praising Fortnite I don't know by that, any okay, stretch of the imagination. Well, you guys heard it That's here a first. rant show in and of itself, let me tell you. <laughs> And then, like, I don't know, it kind of goes back, I, you, I could say quick, that, you know, back in, like, 2008 or something, when we had uh, Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, mm -hmm. those games, and the DLC for those was, quote-unquote, on the discs already at launch. So then people are like, well, just give it to us right away. Why do we got to wait for this, this, and this, these months? Like, because it's supposed to last you for this time. You're not supposed to just get it all. I mean, it makes sense to me. Like, you want to spread the content out. It's like any any content creator too. You spread it out. You don't just give it to everyone right away and be like, "All right." Then then they're gonna want even more again. So did they charge you for that downloadable content though? That was already yes, there. Yes. Okay, yes. I don't like that then. But that like, we're talking 2008, 2009. You Back know, in the, I, the I, early I, days. I'm disagreeing with you on this one. Yeah. So I I, oh, I just remember because Modern Warfare Two it had a, a couple of content updates. Each one was like twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And I'm all happy all I had was see. maps. I think. I'm happy to see more devs leaning into is the free content updates. Mm -hmm. um, unless it's like something crazy. Like if they're going yes. like way over the top with it, that's something that I'm, I'm willing to pay another $20 for. You guys put in a, a ton of work to get this done, but a free map, exactly another map, Hunter. I'm not paying $5 for another map. Um, right. Like, cause that's what the call of duty model was is the new maps. Yep. Oh, $5. You want a new access to a set of guns, five more dollars. Like that's, that's ridiculous. Um, I and think well, hood adding game modes, adding maps, and all and characters for free is huge. Great. But freaking um, subverse. Um, hmm. Paid thirty dollars for early access. Yeah. Everything that comes out now is free for me. Yep. Just all the DLC is going to be free for that game. Yeah. And I think so. when games like Hood <clears throat> say that they have content ready for a year, that they're planning for at least a year's worth of content to come out them some slack right they're clearly they're clearly not done with adding new things to the game and all of that cut them some slack they'll get to it they already told you that for the next year they're planning on having content yeah and, and I, I mean to an extent triple a studios have ruined us in that regard oh yeah because i think of anthem 
Anthem was having like a two year plan and it colossally failed and that two year plan disappeared into dust. So people are yeah. skeptical, but not everything's Anthem. Those AAA studios just keep making the same fucking game with different skins for everything. Yeah. yeah. But I was just going to finish with Boss Owner World being like the prime example. It's like the game release had free content updates monthly. And then when it came time to that Iceborne expansion, it was paid, but it makes sense because it had so much more stuff. So, yeah, I think people just need to fucking relax and just enjoy what you have. Okay. I think in general, people need to fucking relax. To yeah. add on to that, I've seen a lot of people this week on the, on the Hood subreddit specifically mentioning that it seems like people have forgotten how to have fun with a game. Yeah. And I also, like, which one? There's two. <laughs> I don't know. What, what, is the uh, official one the I don't know name? anymore. I just <laughs> I have them both. Uh, okay. But a lot of people have been like, do you know how to have fun? Like, are you enjoying your time? That should be the metric. Yeah. Uh, are you enjoying your time? Are you not? You can provide constructive criticism in there, right? To be sure. But at the base level, are you having a good time? That's what it should come down to. People also need to realize that other people's opinions are valid. Just because you think that you want the game this way, this way, and this way, doesn't mean that everybody does. Mm -hmm. So chill out if it's not going to be that way, because not everybody thinks like you. <sighs> and when you find that Wait. perfect game, then you just found yourself a unicorn, because nobody's going to find a game that suits themselves perfectly. That's right. That's why I'm enjoying Hood so much. <laughs> oh, what do you got for the mobile gaming category here, Mr. Mangoose? Oh, just I think everybody knows. Just mobile games came into the market. They introduced this pay to win model, like free to play, pay to win, and it just took off because you had people that just weren't gamers, weren't used to games, just accepting it like it like it was just the the thing to do like oh i paid and then i win this game i get better than other people by paying money and it just became accepted and the real shit part of that is the mobile market started making so much more money mm -hmm. through games than even the AAA studios that everybody was like all right we got to do that and then because generations came up on these mobile games it's now become the accepted thing to be pay to win even if it's just a small advantage in pay to win it's just accepted it's like oh what a, whatever it's a game and I, I i just hate that so much because uh, cosmetics are fine you know that stuff that doesn't affect gameplay is fine but the mobile market has really affected all the games in such a way that it's just fine to pay for you could pay and get a new hero before everybody else or or something like that and then and then oh um, I, I just hate it i hate it and the problem's compounding recently um yeah the big thing i think if i remember the number correctly it, the number itself isn't terribly important but the size is is call of duty mobile i think made 448 million dollars last year just on the mobile version of call of duty that's insane that's a yeah. stupid amount of money that even almost console doesn't compare to or yeah. the, probably one of the biggest games in the world, right? That's an insane figure for a mobile game to be bringing in. And the thing I relate it back to, honestly, is Candy Crush. Candy Crush broke the space. Yes. In, yeah. yeah. Showing <laughs> what power exactly. could be done for a mobile game. For a oh, game yeah. that is as simple as swiping a piece of candy to the right. And they were making millions of, dollar, uh, millions of dollars a day off of that game. Even so, my mother, not a gamer by any stretch, uh, doesn't like spending money on games, nothing like that. She would spend the dollar to skip the level that she was getting frustrated on. She had, she was like 3,000 levels into Candy Crush, but she would pay it's the, dollar. the dollar. It's just the dollar. It's just the dollar. Times 6.8 billion people, right? Like <laughs> insane numbers that this company came up with. And now we're and like, seeing the AAA studios double down on that. Diablo yes. Mobile, Skyrim Mobile, uh, Wild League of Legends Wild Rift, uh, Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile. Like all these bigger studios are seeing the value of mobile, the mobile space. Apex Legends Mobile, Rocket League Mobile is coming out. Literally everything is becoming mobile. 
I don't mind them coming out with mobile versions of games as long as they're not pay to win. Mm -hmm. I think I think Blizzard was genius with their Diablo mobile. They just forgot who the fuck they were talking to at their own <laughs> yeah, convention. Yeah, don't you guys have phones? To gamers. Okay, mobile gamers <laughs> yeah, are not phones. gamers. Mobile gamers are not got a phone. fucking gamers that are just fucking around casual on their phone. Mm -hmm. And Blizzard was talking to actual gamers that paid money to come to a blizzard conference and treating them like mobile oh. gamers and that's oh. what pissed people off they're like oh fuck you with your do you not have phones that shit was so yeah funny. i don't blame blizzard for uh, making a, a a mobile diablo i'm no. probably going to play the mobile diablo when it when, whenever i can but no i, I don't blame them for <clears throat> making that decision but they have to know who their audience is right oh god yes um and that's and uh, I, I think this is both. I'm, I can't believe I'm going to say this twice in the same video. Epic was really smart in making Fortnite mobile. <laughs> yeah, I, I plain and simple. I can't stand Fortnite to save my life. But the fact that it came out on the mobile space sent their game through the roof. Yeah, man, their question. marketing's making them so much money. All right. Oh, 100 percent. But that's the other problem I have with mobile games, though, is marketing takes precedence over quality. You get slammed in the face with Rage. ads. That they spent... Yes, Ray. <laughs> Perfect example. Every, they they were paying like uh, what's the channel? Oh, Emmy made. It's this Japanese girl that makes fucking crafts and food. I I love watching her channel. She was sponsored by Raid. She makes food and tries MREs. Like everybody's. <laughs> why is she sponsored by Raid? Yeah, because yeah. they're making stupid money. I yes, have no but doubt. they're not putting they're not putting the money into the product. Have you ever played Raid? Have it, either of you ever played Raid? No, I haven't. If I would have stumbled upon that game, I would have thought this is a pretty cool little game. Yeah. But because it was so blah 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 in your face, most ambitious new MOBA. This is just you know, boring to better play. than PC. It's just a regular fucking JRPG, like really. Turn based game, yeah. Yeah, it's your I mean, stereotypical it's cool. mobile game. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. Which a lot, lot of them are just like turn based. There's other games characters. out there that are better, but mm -hmm. they didn't spend all of their budget on advertising, and it's working out for them. Fucking go for it, whatever. But holy shit! Yeah, you know what this this reminds me of because I had to I had to search it again quick, which was the, to figure out again what the real issue was. But the first one of these games, I really enjoyed playing with my buddies. We had a lot of fun. I'd never actually bought the second version of it, but we're talking about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, you guys remember that issue with EA, the loot boxes and everything? Mm -hmm. Loot boxes is high still, but pay to win. People were just buying that shit up and then just destroying everyone. Yeah. Because again, according to this article, it took up to 40 hours to unlock a hero if you just played the game. Who's going to sit there? I already just put 42 hours into Hood, okay? I would have just unlocked one of those heroes. And... Yeah, and then people were just buying everything up, and that destroyed the game. And they had to redo everything. Oh, I, that was just... I remember everyone shitting on that. For Honor's release was the same way with their cosmetics. That it would take you some insane amount of time. I don't remember what the figure was, but it was something ridiculous to go through and actually unlock the cosmetics and executions and all of those things. So that actually never changed. That's still how it is. So it's... It's you have to rank up your your character, which takes fucking forever unless you buy the uh, I forget what it's called, but you get the little sticker and it's basically like a booster that gives you more XP, which that helps because if you don't have that, it takes a long fucking time. Which I know. is why it you, takes a long time is because they have this booster that you can buy. You yep. don't get the good cosmetics until you get to rep eight or nine. Yep. And that takes a long fucking time. Yep. I personally don't think any of that would have been nearly as acceptable if it wasn't for mobile games I completely affecting agree. the rest of the industry. I mean, uh, we can oh, be soft yeah. as well. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In the first two weeks of the game's release, they like halved XP progression and then started selling XP boosts that you could get to play the game. This isn't a single player title that they're doing this in. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like you didn't. You That's really, absurd. really just did that because mobile made it okay. Mobile said, we can make more money this way, so why not? Uh, I, I'm going to rule of threes this, okay? I'm going to rule of threes this. I am fortunate for Epic suing Apple over their pricing on, on their iOS store. 
<laughs> I'm not for I don't care about the lawsuit in and of itself, but I want an open space, an open market in that regard. Right. That if I if Apple truly yeah. is controlling their space and not giving you an option, that is detrimental to the whole of the community. I don't like Epic Game Store. I prefer Steam. But Epic Game Store's existence is beneficial for the community at large. Right. Right. In so, competition is. Yeah, ex exactly. Uh, the fact that Apple's pushing so hard against this shows how much money there is in their mobile space that if they're taking a 30% cut, they're making an insane amount of money from that 30% cut and don't want to share it with anybody. It's all about the money, baby. Exactly. They just want all it, it all the comes back money. down to how much money the mobile space can make. And I will promise to never speak highly about Epic or Fortnite again from this moment <laughs> onward. <laughs> from this moment on. <laughs> I had to get my third <laughs> point out there and then we're good. Uh, Epic, you're dead to me. <laughs> Yo, Mangus, how's that sun treating your face over there? You like that? Yeah. Because my AC is fluttering my curtains. You want to oh, okay. some more? <laughs> That's up to you, man. I think it's me. But yeah, mobile space is an insane beast. And the money's there, right? It's it going to be really hard to uh, decentivize the mobile space can't, anymore. Can't really blame these developers for cashing in on it either. They're nope. there to make money, not to make us happy. It, as a gamer, it drives me nuts. As a business person, I totally understand. Right? I'd be like, yeah, you guys made the smart move. How can I tell you not to go get the market that is basically uncapped in money? Yeah. I mean, same thing with Paragon. I under completely understand why they closed it down from a business perspective, but I still hate them for doing it. Yep. Absolutely. As a gamer. Absolutely. All right. Were there any comments you guys wanted to talk about for last week's video? Uh, Biggie Pauls. Love the name. He says, uh, Sun Wukong still pisses me off <laughs> to this day. 100%. 100%. Completely agree. I still wake this up in the middle of the night. Thinking about Wukong makes me angry. <laughs> wake up in the middle of the night, still like sitting there in a sweat because I thought about Wukong for two seconds. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally understand. Uh, Darkcraft41. I was going to say, I'm sure all of us can yeah, talk about this one. Mentioned that the AI in Hood is basically useless, and that's why it's turning into a team deathmatch instead of a stealth game. Um, and he goes into it a little bit more, but I would agree with him, honestly. I think the AI, some, the, I think the AI's logic is broken. I think if the logic was more fleshed out, it'd be better. But for the most part, AI just kind of like, I'm targeting you. Oh, nope, I'm targeting him way the hell over there for no reason yeah. other than they can. Sheriff is the same way. I, I, Sher Sheriff's a little funny, because then like if you down him right by the winch and you're winching, he gets up, he just kind of walks away. Yeah. So he's, he's funny. He needs some work. Uh, I don't know if I'd say they're basically useless because like so the the peasant guards like the crossbowmen and the little foot soldiers they yeah they suck they're stupid they don't do anything uh, but the the armored knights are actually kind of annoying because like it hit hit mangoes the other day they had the two hit combo uh -huh. uh, and yeah. you can't just uh, just stand there and kind of hit them twice and they die like they have armor but his comment about making it the shadow of war style where, where guards just swarm you okay we've already had guards swarm us and there's like fucking eight of them. That's already a pain in the ass That's to deal with. You want like 20 of them, dude. Okay. When I'm sitting here with seven arrows at max or 10 as Robin, and I'm supposed to just headshot all of them. Like, come on. That'd be a little excessive. And again, for what the game is, that would be, like I said, excessive. And I think it actually is interesting because based on the characters that we prefer to play, for me, I think the AI is more useless, but that's because I can just smoke and assassinate them. So, because I'm Marianne. <laughs> Yeah. So literally, oh, I'm swarmed by 10 guards, smoke, they're all dead. Smoke. Like, it's just that easy. Like, <laughs> so I wish... Yeah, I have to sit football fields away yeah. and hope that you find me. <laughs> and on those <laughs> nights, wrong, your arrows don't do anything. So you're just, do anything. you're just yeah. SOL. So I just have I just to like, kind of run away and be like, fuck it, all right. Have I just throw a grenade now. down, hold block, and back up, and they all walk into the grenade <laughs> and blow up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I definitely uh, think there's something to yeah. be done there. It needs improvement for sure, but it's not, like, terrible. Their detection radius needs definite improvement. You shouldn't be able to stand right in front of a guard, but that's, just that's be crouched funny. in flowers and then not see you. And then you stand up out of the flowers, throw a rock behind them <laughs> yeah, while yeah. they're looking straight at you. <laughs> they're like, I have <laughs> this, man. <laughs> What's behind me? Go look. I, I just love game. Sheriff, though. If you throw a rock for Sheriff, and he just goes, he's just standing there. He's like, what? The fuck? <laughs> <Are you> just, <laughs> <laughs> just slowly stopping earthquake in the ground. 
Uh, I wish if you got the sheriff to walk through a bush, it actually flattened the bush for a period of time. Oh, oh, that would be neat. Also, I just thought of this, but I thought of this when I was recording earlier. I think that a cool mechanic would be that, you know, when you take the chest out and then eventually the sheriff shows up, he should pick the fucking chest back up like in one of the trailers like he does and just start walking it back to the vault. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's so many... I was in a fucking game yesterday. We were on Marshland. I was playing by myself, but I joined the game in progress. We had three Robins and a Marianne. They only had one melee. So we were taking this chest back and forth through the open for like 20 minutes. I kid you not. And Sheriff eventually came over. But like, you should just pick that up and start walking it back to the vault. Because yeah, it comes I'm like a... That becomes a stalemate. It's annoying. Because <laughs> like... <laughs> you have to stop him with a grenade or a yeah. of arrow. So if he's just walking with it, you come up... <laughs> drop it, drop it. You just keep walking, you know? Like... <laughs> I think that would be a fun mechanic. I wish the That's sheriff, more than anything, was way more menacing than he is. The first couple I think games, he's, I think I like he's really quake. terrifying. But then yeah. once you get used to how he works, he kind of becomes a pushover. Yeah, he's funny. He sneaks up on you, though. Like... Does, oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's nothing scarier than turning a corner while you're carrying the chest and sheriff right in your face. And you're like, well, I'm just dead. <laughs> Thanks, game. <Yeah>. Like... <laughs> All right, guys. Well, anything else you wanted to talk about this week? That's all I got. Any plugs, Raven? As usual, the YouTube. Check me out. Stuff. I'll have an official hood kind of review video up uh, to, well, Sunday. Uh, but you, at the time recording this, I'm sure this will be up after that. But we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and but, what about yeah. you, Schmangoose? Yeah, I've just been doing a lot more videos than normal. Check it out if you want. Sounds good. Same here. YouTube videos all galore. But that's going to be it for us on Untitled Rancho this week. Leave your comments down below if you disagree with us or have a title for us because we're still the Untitled Rancho Show and we may always be the Untitled Rancho. Show. And it's just ignoring I... our, the title suggestions anyway, so keep them coming. Exactly. Yeah, we'll just read them even if, they're, <laughs> if, even if we don't use them. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But guys, that's going to be it for us. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye.